Hi, good morning guys, thanks for joining me. Hope everyone's had a nice Easter break. That weather, absolutely stunning. I think you got to around about 20 degrees around here, but unfortunately I spent most of it at work. So a typical Thursday off in around about two weeks. The forecast for today is heavy thunderstorms, showers, that kind of thing. So just got the tarp set up there just in case. But what I thought we'd do in today's video is a QA and a video. I do get asked questions periodically. Not a great deal, around about three emails a week, that kind of thing and also questions just regarding to some of the older videos. So what I thought we'd do is answer them questions. Most of them are about gear, some of it which has been shown on the channel, some of it which hasn't. So I've just got it just over in the rucksack there. Just gonna have a nice chilled out day. I was gonna do a little bit about cordage, just collecting just a few natural materials, but I just didn't have the time just to prepare things. So fingers crossed this video isn't gonna bore you. It might be a bit of interest. Okay, so these are the items which have been asked about more than any other really. And uh, just starting off with the jacket or the coat. And every time I wear this, I seem to get uh, you know comments about it, questions about it, so we'll run through that. Another one is, what kind of uh, socks do I wear when I'm wearing boots or out hiking, that kind of thing, so we'll run through that. I've had a few questions about this little knife. One of the items which I've been using, but I haven't really spoke about on the channel, so we'll talk about that. And a very popular video was the Tom Shoe wood gas stove and still you know I get questions and comments to this day about it so we'll just talk a bit about that and another one was the fire roll and uh, I use this for a field sharpening kit but again I do let ask quite a few questions about that and also these little work gloves which you wear again another popular thing that people talk about and the last thing is the rucksack here the 511 Rush 72 People ask, you know, how did I get on with it and how do I find it after a couple of years worth of use? So these are the items. I'm just going to just get out just into the sun just so we can just get a few close-ups and that kind of thing. And like I say, we're going to answer the questions, just run through the specs and talk about these little bits of kit. Okay, so the first thing we'll start off with is the little knife. And uh, I've had this around about, I'm going to say just under 12 months. I purchased it last summertime and I've uh, been very happy with it. And this is the Enzo Necker. I think it's called an Enzo Necker 70. I do like Enzo knives, so I was looking at the trapper. But this one here, a nice compact little fixed blade, full tang. So a nice sturdy little knife. And uh, the steel that they've used is 12C27 stainless, and it is my favourite stainless. Very forgiving. It's also a nice stainless to sharpen. And these you can get to various different grinds. You can get them in a full flat, you can get them in convex. So I went with the Scandi grind. You can also get a choice of handle materials. This one here being the curly birch. And uh, depending on the kind of handles that you get, dictates the kind of sheath. If you go with the micarta, I think you can get a small Kydex sheath. But if you go for with the curly birch, you get this uh, full grain leather sheath again. A nice, uh, nice leather sheath. And these are made over in Finland, you know, good quality. And with this one here, you can either wear it just as a little belt knife if you wanted to, or you can put a lanyard through there and wear it as a little necker. But uh, dimensions of it really. So it's a small knife, it's only six inches overall length. The blade length is two and a half inches with a small drop point just on the front there. And the handle length is three and a half inches. Now I've only got a, a small hand, so you know I don't find it too bad if it is you've got a larger hand. You have got a lanyard hole at the back there that you can put a small thing lanyard in. And then you could actually just hold that just a little bit further back if you wanted to. But uh, absolutely stunning little knife, it comes in handy for all sorts of things, food prep, cutting cordage. You know, I can just wear it around the neck if I'm doing any kind of carving. I've been using it for splitting down wood, you know, taking the bark off and that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, it's been very, very useful for me. And the cost of one of these is around about £49. If you go with the uh, the micarta ones, I think they're a little bit cheaper, around about £40, something like that. But uh, absolutely stunning little knife. Not too expensive, well finished, well made and uh, very, very useful. Okay, the next uh, little category or the next thing which I was asked about is what kind of socks do I like to wear when I'm hiking or when I'm pretty much out and about. So over the years I've worn various different socks. I did spend quite a few years working in a mountaineering shop where we did a lot of climbing, kayaking, hiking, that kind of thing. And uh, I did get sucked into merino wool. I've been wearing merino wool socks now for the past 20 odd years. When I first started wearing merino wool, you can only get them from New Zealand or the, the wool came from New Zealand anyway. 
and traditionally you know a pair would cost you around about 20 30 pounds so they've always been quite expensive i've noticed recently there's quite a bit of merino wool coming from china so that's uh, brought the price down which is nice not sure if the quality is the same you know wool as wool at the end of the day but uh, the sock which i do always come back to is a company called seal skins and i think it's a british company and the beauty about seal skins is the fact that they are waterproof and they are breathable now for someone like myself who spends a lot of time working around water, whether I'm wading, whether I'm just near pools, lakes, rivers, that kind of thing, or just walking through wet grass in general, it doesn't take long for a pair of leather boots to start seeping in. There's nothing worse in my opinion than having wet soggy feet all day. So the seal skin socks, I do have around about four to five pairs, and I've just brought just a couple of pairs out to show you. And uh, what I'm, is a short pair, so these are perfect. If you've got any kind of approach shoes on, that kind of thing, perhaps you've you know, just got a pair of short hiking boots on. Like I say, 100% waterproof, 100% breathable. They do come with a lifetime guarantee, so if they do leak, you know, you can send them back, get them tested and just see if it's a fault of the sock itself. And uh, one pair to do wear a lot of the time are the longer socks, and these are perfect, like I say, if I'm wearing them, you know, when I'm wading. So, you know, I'll have them under my waders. And again, I forgot to, while he's on that kind of thing, they're a nice, comfortable sock. They're cushioned underneath, around the toes, around the back of the heels. And uh, they are around about, I'd say around about one and a half times the thickness of a good, nice, thick, decent sock. And again, you can wash them, dry them, you know, just treat them like a normal pair of socks. But they're not cheap. You know, you're going to pay anywhere between 40 and 50 pounds for them, depending on the type that you want and the size that you want. For something that's got a lifetime guarantee, like I say, if you do have a problem with them, you can send them back and they have had them replaced in the past. So, in my opinion, when it comes to your feet, we all talk about, you know, kind of good quality knife and a good quality axe. No one really talks about wearing, you know, good quality footwear and good quality socks. At the end of the day, if there's a choice between a good knife, a good axe, or my feet, I'd go with my feet every time because that's the thing that's going to be getting me in and out of the woods at the end of the day. So, in my opinion, you know, spending a bit of money on, you know, decent footwear and decent socks, you know, is paramount. So, when it comes to socks, like I say, merino wool will be the undersock. If I'm just out, like I'm doing today, it's a nice warm day, I've just got a merino wool sock just under the boot there. But uh, for the majority of the time, the majority of the weather conditions, that kind of thing, I'll always go with a pair of seal skins. Okay, so moving on to the next extremities, which is the fingers. And uh, like I say, these gloves here do seem quite popular. And these I came across on Amazon. <clears throat> they weren't very expensive, I think I paid around about £12 for them. And these are made by Carhartt, and these are called the Sea Grip Knuckle Glove. Bit of a long-winded name, but uh, the reason being, I think, is because they do make various different sorts. They make the knuckle, they make, uh, I think it's called a Pro Palm, and they make an impact. So this one here being the knuckle, you've got just a bit of protection there just across the knuckle. And all it is, basically, is just a lightweight knitted glove, and then they just injection mould the plastic around it, or the rubber around it. And when I first purchased them, I wasn't that impressed with them. I found that the rubber was very, very tacky, and then whenever you touched anything, you know, they'd be covered in fluff, they'd be covered, you know, with all the duff off the ground, that kind of thing. But that's soon worn off, and, uh, you know, there's a pair of gloves, you know, I absolutely love them. So just treat them just like, just a light wear, what's well, sorry, a light pair, you have work gloves, you know, they're not heat proof, that kind of thing, so I always still bring a leather pair of gloves with me. But they're nice if you're using an axe, if you're using a saw, it just gives you a little bit of grip, it just gives you that little bit of protection. But, uh, you know, a nice lightweight pair of gloves that you can just keep in the rucksack, keep in your jacket pocket, that kind of thing. And uh, we'll just give you just a bit of a close up there. You can just see they are quite grippy just on the palm and on the fingers. And you've got all these little bits here just so that they bend. But uh, like I say, no different really than if you buy just a you know cheap pair from B&Q, that kind of thing. But I did like the style on, I did like the colour. And I'm saying again, you know, anywhere around about £10, £12 a pair. But I will leave all the links in the description box for this kind of thing. All the stuff that we run through today, like I say, if you are interested in it then, it just means you'll be able to find it just a little bit easier. And uh, I was looking for a guy the other day with these. I can only find them on the Carhartt website, they hadn't got them on Amazon. And uh, these ones here are green and brown. But I've noticed nowadays that most of them tend to be just grey and black and that kind of thing. But like I say, I will leave all the links in the description box if you are looking for a lightweight pair of work gloves. You know, I've had these now for around about, I'd say, 12 months, perhaps just over 12 months, and uh, they're still going, you know, really, really well. If you was, they did buy one of them cheaper pairs, which I tend to wear 90% of the time at work anyway. I'd probably get through around about three or four pairs a month where these, you know, have held on. And, uh, you know, I've been really impressed with them. OK, 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to take a look at is the fire roll, or what I use it for is all the smaller sharpening items. And these are made by Three Trees Products here in the UK. And a couple of the questions really were how did they find it, you know, what's the quality like, and how did it hold up. Well, unfortunately, this isn't the one which I showed in the review. The one which I showed in the review was the copper brown, but uh, I did like them that much. I've actually bought a couple more of them. And that one which was in the review, I've actually got in my work pack, again, with sharpening items in for sharpening filleting knives, pocket knives, belt knives, and that kind of thing. So this one here is a recent purchase. The other one, you know, is, is held up no different than what this one is. And the thing that I like about them is how compact they are, the amount of items that you can carry in them. It makes them very, very useful. And the quality of them, again, for the price, is absolutely awesome. I think that's what... Uh, a lot of people were referring to because these kind of things are only around about seven or eight pounds. They do come with free postage and packing. And there's quite a bit of work that's gone into it. You know, little leather finishes there, the stitching's all nice and neat. And you've got the separate pockets there for all the all small individual items. So like I say in this one here, I use for the field sharpening kit. I'll just uh, pan the camera down and we'll just run through the items really, really quickly. And like I say, you've got the individual compartments. Some of them a little bit wider than others, obviously, so you can put different things in them. So this main section here, I've just got a little bit of scotch pad and a razor and a little strop, so that's just so I can clean the rust off things. The razor is just so I can clean the little ceramic sides down and also the little diamond plates and obviously the strop is self-explanatory. I've got a DC4 and a CC4. I mentioned in the past I like the DC4 on the Atchets and the CC4 for the knife. And then just a little piece of rag there just so I can use some of the oil which I like to carry, which is the Ballastol, and then I also carry just a small little tube there with Autosol, which is to go on the strop again. So like I say, these are all just the small little field sharpening items, originally designed for the fire kit, so if it is you want to put your fire kit in it, it will accommodate that. But pretty much anything that's small and you want to keep together, you know, these kind of things will accommodate really, really well. Just roll up really nice and compact. You've also got a nice length of cord there so you can actually hang them up so again if you want to keep them out of the dirt if you're using them in the workshop whatever it may be it just means then you've got a good way of hanging them up and just making sure that everything's at hand so for £7.95 an absolute bargain I think I mentioned it when I did the review and uh, worth every single penny So just before I put this uh, jacket away for the summertime and probably get it out next winter, I just thought we'd run through it quickly. You know, this jacket itself, or smock should I say, seems to generate a bit of interest whenever I put it on. So this one itself is made by a company called Napa Jari, and uh, I think it's a Norwegian company. And uh, I will leave the links in the description box. Now this one here is around about 20 years old. I've noticed with the modern versions you get, you know, Napa Jari everywhere. And one thing which I do like about it is the plain feature. I do like the colour of it. But the most important thing, I do like how it uh, you know, keeps the elements off me and it does keep me warm. Now this one here being 20 years old, I just can't wear it out. It's a wool and cordura jacket. Absolutely bomb proof. There's not a single burn in it. You know, there's no little holes, any rips, anything like that. And uh, in my opinion, it's probably been the best jacket or smock which I've ever owned. So to put it on, it is over the head. You've got a zipper there just so if you're sitting down, it just flares up, just makes it just a little bit more comfortable. And you've got one main kangaroo style pocket just at the front, which I do like. So if I've got a lumber strap fastened on a rucksack, it means I can carry on putting stuff in the pocket there. You know, if I've got uh, pockets down here, then I wouldn't be able to use them. Just at the sides here, you've got a couple of hand warmer pockets. Everything is fleece lined, just to keep things just nice and warm on them cold days. The hood is fully adjustable. So you've got this gate here just to keep all the wind from going in and you can cinch everything up and fasten everything up with these poppers just to make sure that no weather's coming in. Absolutely awesome smock. This one is called the Skidoo smock or the Skidoo jacket. I think when I originally purchased it, I think they called it the Sherpa smock. But again, like I say, this one's 20 years old, but you can still get them. I will leave the links in the description box and the cost of these I've seen from anywhere from £250 all the way up to about £450. I suppose that just depends really, you know, where you're buying them from. But uh, absolutely awesome jacket. Like I say, I'll be putting this away now until the winter time. And uh, for those of you that are interested, like I say, I will leave all the links in the description box. But uh, in my opinion, 
an absolutely awesome garment. Okay, so one item of kit which tends to generate quite a few questions and comments is the Tom Shoe wood gas stove. Now I did a video about this around about 12 months ago I think it was and I've been using it quite extensively ever since I brought it and for £20 it's been an absolute bargain. So quite a few other questions are how did it last, how does it work, what do I think about it. So for your 20 quid, the quality has been absolutely brilliant. You know the little mesh bag that comes with it is held together, no holes in it the cordage and everything, you know, still fine. But most importantly is about the stove itself. And uh, I'm very impressed with how it works. The stove itself, like I say, has been used quite a bit and uh, there's quite a bit of staining and little bits of rust. We just get the camera just to pick up just the side of the body there. You just see little bits of corrosion, that kind of thing. But the inside is a little bit pitted. It's got tar in it, you know, that kind of thing. But the stove itself still works fine. You know, I'm sure it's not the best quality stainless steel, and to be some kind of a rust, but in my opinion for the money, you know, I'm absolutely chuffed a bit with it. So when it comes to putting it together, very, very simple. I'll just pan the camera down just a little bit, just so you can see. And you just start off just by getting your ash plate, and it just drops just into the air chamber, like so. And then you've got the main bottom ring, and that just sits just on top. And then you've just got your pot stand, which will just finally just sit on top of there. And that's pretty much just the stove set up and ready to go and I'll just carry just a couple of trivets with it there and they'll just fasten just on the top nice and simple so some of the comments which uh, came with the original video saying you know that I was using it wrong I wasn't using it as it's been designed and in my opinion you know there's various different ways of using it you know it hasn't got to be done one certain way a lot of people are saying it's called a top lift upside down stove which it is in all fairness so basically if you want to make it last quite a long time perhaps you're cooking a good meal Perhaps you want to boil water after you know the way that you can set it up is by making pretty much an upside down fire so i've just prepared just a little bit of wood and if it was like i was saying i wanted to use it and have it burning for quite a you know long time it's just a case of just packing just the stove itself with your fuel and i've just used just a couple of rounds and just split them down and then we can set all that inside so it's nice and compact See if we can fit just another one in there. So you could have your timber when your fuel just set up like so. Then we could just make just a small upside down fire on top, and that will burn down gradually then and it will last a lot longer. But if it says I'm just making a cup of tea, I don't see why you know, I'm gonna be spending 15 minutes finding the wood, cutting it down to size, stacking it up, and then getting a little fire going. You know, if I'm just gonna make a quick brew, it's simpler for me just to put a bit of birch bark in the bottom and just use it as a conventional twig stove. But it's just coming up to uh, dinner time, I'm just gonna make myself a quick brew. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna light it the upside down way. I'm just gonna see how it burns and how it works.
Okay, so that's the water now come to the boil. That took around about, I don't know, around about six minutes, something like that. And the majority of that fuel is left still in the bottom of the stove there burning. So again, if it was that you wanted to cook some food, this is obviously the better way to do it. I can now just get the frying pan out or the saucepans, wherever it may be, and cook myself a nice meal. But again, if it is I just wanted to make a quick cup of tea, I would have just used it just as a, some kind of conventional twig stove. That would have done me pretty much. So we're just going to pan the camera down. I'm just going to take a look how much of this fuel is left. And if you notice here, just on the base, I just split just a quick, you know, little round, just an half. And it just means then that the stove itself isn't sitting directly on the ground because underneath these stoves do get really hot on the ground itself at the moment, it's bone dry. And that just brings me on to the last item of kit which we'll talk about and that's the 511 Rush 72 rucksack. Again, an absolutely awesome pack, around about 55 litres in size and perfect for everything which I'm using it for for day hikes like I am at the moment coming down here to do videos. It's certainly, you know, very well thought out. There's enough features and pockets and everything for all the kit. And again, you know, the quality of it is absolutely awesome. 1050D nylon, heavy duty, plenty of webbing on it if you're carrying extra pouches and that kind of thing. And even though it's a couple of years old, it has been used quite a bit. In my opinion, it still looks pretty much brand new. It's got the odd scuff on it, a little bit of dirt here and there, which is to be expected. But all the stitching's held up really, really well. The zippers are top quality. It's all YKK zippers. All the mesh inside is certainly held up. It's not ripped or torn. The zippers haven't come away. There's no stitching which ripped. And at the end of the day, I do abuse this pack. This pocket here is probably the most used pocket for putting wet tarps and that kind of thing. I ram it down, stuff everything out. You know, the pack itself has been overstuffed. And like I say, these zippers have all held up. The fabric itself, you know, it still looks pretty much brand new. And the cost of one of these is around about £150. So they're not cheap, but at the end of the day, you know, the quality of it certainly makes them worthwhile. You know, if you're going to buy one of these, I'm sure you're going to get years of use out of it. And uh, like I say, very well thought out. Clamshell design. I've been through all these features, you know, in other videos. So I don't want to, uh, you know, spend too much time on it. But it says that you're looking for a good quality pack. Opens up all the way. So that you can get to all your items nice and easily. Easily stored. Plenty of features for our Jason bladders. Little pockets all over the place. Nice little sunglasses box at the top there with a good quality fleece liner. And at the end of the day, I've been very, very impressed with it. I'd certainly buy another one if anything ever happened to this one. You can buy them in various different colours. This one here is the stone. I do like, I think it's the earth brown or earth green or something like that. But you can get them in the multicams, you can get them in blacks. You know, there's various different, different colours out there. I'm not sure if they've changed the design a little bit on the newer ones. Like I say, this one here is a few years old. But uh, if you are looking for a 50 litre pack, got around about 150 quid to spare. And in my opinion, you won't go far wrong. So there we have it guys, just a quick look at a few of the items which people were interested in. Hopefully I've covered everything. If you've got a few more questions, just leave them in the comments section or just send me an email. I'm always quite happy to answer anything. I have noticed that the channel's coming up now to 5,000 subscribers, so I'd just like to thank everyone for supporting the channel and just say hello to all the new subscribers. And just to show a little bit of appreciation when I'm next down at the Bushcraft Show, which is the end of May, then I'll pick up a few prizes and we'll have a giveaway. Again, just a massive thank you from me too for supporting the channel. So like always guys, you just leave me say thanks a lot for you stopping by and watching the video, like always. Until next time, you take care and I'll see you again.